At Herringut Learning Center, we use Growing Kelp in the Classroom as an experiential educational tool. In this video, we're going to show you the process of collecting kelp from your local beach and sporing it out to grow in your classroom over the winter. Good luck! The best time to look for kelp with source tissue in Maine is from August to September, maybe even a little bit in October. I really love to look for source tissue after a big storm on local beaches, and also, if I can't find any on the beach, I'll go to local docks and pilings that I've noticed kelp growing in the past. When I look for kelp, I want to find a nice clean piece of kelp with a dark strip of sores down the middle. This piece is pretty tattered along the edges and decaying a bit. And it also has quite a bit of bryzoans and other things growing on it. So I'm going to leave this piece behind. I have this smaller piece of kelp. It looks a little bit healthier. When I hold it up to the sun though, I don't see that nice dark strip of sores tissue that I'm looking for. I see it starting to develop just a little bit, but it's not quite developed enough yet. I also found this piece of kelp. This piece of kelp is a little tattered along the edges, but when I hold it up to the sun, I start to see the developing of that nice dark strip of sores tissue. I would like for this to be a little bit more solid and a little bit thicker, but this is a start if I can't find anything better. Since this is the best piece of sores tissue we found at the beach, we're also going to go down and check our local docks for some sugar kelp with nice sores tissue in the middle. Before sporing out the kelp, I want to prepare my seeded line. I've sanitized my hands and put on gloves. This is my special kelp line. I have a piece of PVC that I've cut notches into either side. I'm going to carefully begin wrapping this right around. I did put a little extra line on either end as well so that we're able to continuously test and check out pieces of our kelp line underneath the microscope. So this is a bit of a long process. So I'm being careful not to put my kelp line down anywhere. When I get to the end, I'm gonna cut my kelp string with my sterile scissors. Again, leaving myself a little bit of extra to put in that notch. This extra is going to come in handy as my kelp grows on the line and I wanna look at it underneath the microscope, I'll be able to cut off little pieces for students to look at under the microscope. And there is my kelp spool. Soak the spool in chilled sterile seawater or chilled deionized water for a few hours before inoculation with released spores. Next I'm going to identify the kelp that I have with nice sores tissue that doesn't have excess biofouling. I'm going to carefully take my razor blade, being very cautious of the sharp edge. I'm going to use that to cut out the sores tissue trying to cut off any excess biofouling that I'm seeing. Any of your sores tissue that does have excess biofouling, you do want to just discard that kelp. You can also use an X-Acto knife for this process or even a pair of really sharp scissors. I like to cut it into manageable pieces. I could just cut out one big giant piece of sores tissue, but it's easier for me to work with when I have multiple smaller pieces. Now you don't necessarily need this much, but we did want to make sure that we had the best chance of having a successful spore release. Next, we're going to clean our sores tissue. I have my 3% iodine solution, a pair of forceps, which I'm going to clean with a bit of rubbing alcohol. And I'm also going to re-clean my razor blade with a bit of rubbing alcohol. I'm going to be really careful in these steps, especially with the razor blade. And give those a little clean. And check over each piece of sores tissue to, to see if there's any biofouling. If it's major biofouling, you can go ahead and cut that piece right out. It's like I've missed a piece here. But if there's not a lot, I'm going to use that sterilized razor blade. I'm going to carefully scrape that biofouling right off of the sores tissue. Next, I'm going to wipe each side three or four times to remo remove any mucilage. I'm 
discard that paper towel. Using my forceps, I'll then inspect it one more time and dip it into a 3% iodine solution for 30 seconds. Next, using my chilled filtered seawater, I'll rinse the sores tissue until the water running off of it appears to run clear, ensuring that I've removed all of the iodine. That looks good. Then, I get a nice clean piece of paper towel. I'll set that right in there. Fold it over the top. Set that to the side. And I'll continue cleaning my next pieces of sores tissue. Now that I have all of my cleaned sores, I'm getting it ready to go in the refrigerator. I have it layered between these pieces of paper towel. I'm going to put it in a cold refrigerator that's set to about 50 degrees Fahrenheit for 14 to 24 hours before I proceed with my next step. I'm back with my chilled, filtered, sterilized seawater with added nutrients, my source tissue from the day before, a pair of forceps, a stirring implement, sanitized and gloved hands. I'm going to now release the spores from the sores. So I'm going to open up my package that was refrigerated. A bit of the brown murky residue to see on the paper towels is a fine thing. It's a sign that, it, it can be a sign that the spores did begin to release. I'm going to add these in to the chilled filtered seawater. Then I'm going to begin stirring. What I'm looking for is a release of a cloudy, murky water in there. This can take several hours. It might happen immediately or it could take several hours as the water begins to warm. We've stirred every couple of minutes. After a little while, we did begin to see the murky cloudiness emerging from the sori to indicate to us that we had a successful release of spores. Don't worry if you're not successful your first go around. It's a challenging process and it takes a lot, long time to master. We still regularly try to release spores with limited success. So that's why we like to use a lot of sores tissue to give us the highest likelihood of success. Instead of using a settling tube, we've opted to pour our spores directly into the holding tank. So I have my chilled, filtered seawater with added nutrients, my kelp seeding line. It is important that you have a lid on your tank. I'm going to carefully pour that right in. I'm pouring slowly so that that tube doesn't knock over. Over the next couple of days, I'm going to monitor the tank to see if I'm noticing any growth on the kelp string. At first, it'll look like a little bit of brown fuzzies. Uh, over time, you'll be able to put that under the microscope and see your young kelp. 